Hi everyone, this is Amanda from Echo Consulting, and I wanted to continue on a video that I made in the past about how to use Asana um, to create a crate log for, in this case, planning an event. This is a summer staff party for the Echo team, um, but really just a demonstration of, of how you can use Asana to manage all of the elements or all the aspects of a project. Um, and so I'm working off the same data set that I used in a past video. Again, this is for a summer staff party. We've got all of these items in our project space, and we've decided that we want to know the priority of these items. We want to know what type of CRAID item it is. So if you missed that video, CRAID stands for Change Request, Risk, Action, uh, Issue, and Decisions. So a really fantastic way to keep track of not just to-dos, but also risks that might uh, become issues at some point, changes that have happened, decisions that have been made, just all around all the data that goes into a project. Um, and then we've got status over here as well. So you can see we've got everywhere from not started to complete, blocked, um, and a couple of other options. If I just click this, you can see we've got a bunch of options here. So we've got our project space, and I just wanted to show a couple of ways to sort of level up your um, your CRAID log, your CRAID log project space. So first and foremost, I find automations in Asana to be really helpful for just taking the manual work out of any project management software that you're using. Um, and so again, I'm working in the paid subscription of Asana. This is the business subscription. Um, automations, I do not believe are available for the free subscription, but any of the paid subscriptions, you can get access to these automations. So they're not essential, but they do save a lot of time because they take a lot of the manual labor out of using this type of software, especially if you have a lot of projects that you're managing or a lot of uh, data within each project. So what I'd like to do is set up a really simple automation for marking, um, kind of changing the status of projects when they have been completed, and also the way that we kind of filter and sort these project items. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up to our customize button, and I'm going to go to rules. And then I'm just going to say add rule. If you click into that box, you'll get this item or uh, this uh, kind of dashboard space that shows you what are options for items. You know, there's a lot of preset automations here. It's really great to use to get started. I find that when I know what kind of a rule I want to make, I just go to create a custom rule. So that's what I'm going to do. Every time you have a rule that you're going to add and create a custom one, you can name it and then you start with the trigger and the action that follows. So I'm going to name this rule um, item complete. And then actually I'm going to say status to complete. So the trigger that I want to add in here is that when I check off an item, so let me back out of this for just one second. Asana often works in this kind of checkbox uh, interface. There are other types of items you can have in Asana. There's approvals, um, there's milestones, but for the most part, it tends to show things as checkboxes. And when you click a checkbox, depending on how you've got your space configured, it's just gonna sort of gray out the text and it'll show that it's complete. Um, but the item kind of still shows up in the same way in terms of all of these fields that we've added. So what I wanna do is that when I check this off, I want the status to change to complete. And so I'm gonna go back into my customize button, I'm gonna find rules, add a rule, create a custom rule. Okay, so item status complete. So my trigger here, you can see there's a lot of options for triggers. What I want to do is scroll down until I find where it says task or all subtasks are marked complete. And so hit that task is marked as complete. You can also say the task is incomplete, but we definitely want complete. And the action that happens when I mark a task complete is that I want this project status to change to complete. So I need to go find in here set custom field. There we go. So the field that I have is status or status. And I'm going to change this status to complete. And so this is helpful if, uh, if you followed along in the last video, if I'm sorting by status, I want to make sure that all the status column, the status column data is updated based on if the task or the item has been checked off or not. I'm going to create that rule. 
Okay, so nothing's going to happen right away because something has to be something has to be changed to trigger this automation. So what I'm going to do is let's say I made the guest list; it's complete. All I need to do here is click off this checkbox, and you'll see there's a little menu that's going to pop up that says there's a rule that's happening, and then you can see this status change to complete. So now if I sort by status, that make guest list is going to join all of the complete quote items. I'm going to unsort that. Now it's really nice to have the automation set up before you really start working with the data because you can see I've already got complete items, um, but they're not checked off, right? So this will tell me that the automation is running. You're not going to see anything change here because they already have complete as their status. Um, but again, it's a really helpful automation, even if you already have a data set that you're working with. The second automation that I want to do is um, essentially moving items into different sections of this project by create item. So there's a couple of steps here. And this is really a, a personal preference for me. I find that I work better when I've got items broken out into sections rather than just like a big list. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sections by create item. So I'm just gonna say, let's say change request, action item, risk, issue, and decision. Decision, okay. C-R-A-I-D, yep, okay. And then what I'm gonna do is create a rule that says if there's an item in this list that is assigned a create item, create item type, it's gonna be moved into that section. So rather than having to like sort by create item to get that kind of, okay, here's a group of decisions, here's a group of actions that I need to do, just for the visualization of it, I just find that separating into sections really helpful. So I'm gonna go into customize, make a rule, add a rule, create a custom rule. And then we'll have to do one of these for each create item. So I'm just going to say change request section. Okay. And so the, the trigger for this is that a custom field, so an item in the project gets the change request field added to it. So that is the data that is put into that item. And when that happens, I wanna move this item to the change request section. So check this out. I'm gonna close that. I'm just gonna add a new item and just say sample item. I'm gonna say it's a low priority. And I'm gonna say, this is the change request. I'm gonna let this automation go through. And so it moves that item to the change request section. And so what I could do if I wanted to, is anywhere I see change request or anywhere, once I get all these built, uh, I'm just gonna go in and clear them out and then re-add the data so that they move into the proper section. You can also click and drag items into a section if you'd like, but it's just, again, letting the automation do its thing. So I'm just gonna pause this video for a second. I'm going to do that same automation type for each individual create item. And then we'll go through and let the data be so sorted that way and you'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I've gone in and I've made all these automations. Anytime you create an automation or a rule in Asana, you'll see this little yellow um, lightning bolt next to the section, if it has to do with the section, um, or you'll see that little notification pop up, it's gonna happen. So all I'm gonna do, again, I'm just doing this because I've already got this data filled in and I want you to see this in action. So I'm just gonna go through and kind of wipe out the create item. And then I'm gonna go in and add it back in. Okay, so this one, I know all three of these are decisions. So I'm actually just gonna make all of these nothing. And make them all decisions. I'll do the same thing here. These are actions. I'm doing this just kind of quickly, just so that we can get through all of this within this video. Okay. So now you can see if I were to add any kind of task, um, let's go ahead and make a, we'll add a section that's just 
um, uncategorized. Because that is where we want our new items to go. Here. Okay. So I was going to say sample two. No, sample three. Sample two. <laughs> All right. So now. change that. Anytime that you add a new item into your crate log. So uh, let's say another uh, party decision might be decor. That's a decision. That's a relatively high decision. I'm going to say that's a decision. And so now anytime that you've got new items coming in, they're going to go right into the proper crate item type group. Um, and so again, this is mostly for visualizing data and getting kind of a clear delineation of the different items. Um, not essential, but I think it's pretty helpful. And part of this that I like about our automations, there's one more thing that I want to do here, which is that I want to be able to change the priority level based on if it is an issue or not. Um, so let's say hypothetically if something is an issue we want it to be raised up to critical so i'm going to make an automation here the trigger is if a task is let's actually say if a crate item is set to issue then the action is that the priority level gets changed to critical Okay, so I'll just go ahead and do that with one of our sample items. So what would an issue be? Um, let's say issue with our party might be that, let's say our party space is double booked. Let's say we figured this out like a week before and this is a problem. So we're gonna add this to the issue create item. It's going to be moved to the issue section and you can see that it's been given this critical priority. So now if I want to filter by priority and I want only the critical items, I can see there's, an, there's a critical action here that has been completed and there's a critical issue that has not been completed. And so that needs to be addressed. Okay, so a couple of options here in terms of automations in our project space. Um, I'll do another video in a little bit, perhaps, about how you might use dashboards to help you manage this party as well, this planning, this kind of project space. Um, and of course, you can imagine how you might do that in your own workflow. So I hope this is helpful. Again, this is how to kind of level up your crate log in Asana for planning an event. Um, we've got a ton of content like this on our YouTube channel. We are Echo Consulting. So definitely check us out. Give us a follow if you are managing multiple projects and trying to navigate these different project management software um, types because we've got a lot of tips and tutorials and really great um, advice for how to use them. Thanks so much.